All right, so we got a quick one today. Vignesh Sri wanted to see a video on ground plane detection using the latest Vuforia in Unity 3D. Javad RG also wanted to do video playback in AR, so we're gonna do that today as well. First of all, Vuforia released Vuforia 7 not that long ago, and there's two special features to take note of. Number one is they now have native integration with Unity 3D, so no more like dragging in a plugin, anything like that. And they also came out with ground plane detection. So why is this important? Both ARKit and ARCore both do ground plane detection. So that covers Android and iOS. But here's the thing, uh, Vuforia's native integration now and their ground plane detection simplifies our build process greatly for development. Now, all we have to do, instead of making like two separate apps, one Android or, or one AR kit, one AR core, now we make one app in Vuforia and just simply change our target build platform and build out to either Android and iOS from the same app. And now we have an app that works cross platform. The other main thing that I was not expecting is this ground plane detection actually supports more phones than AR kit and AR core. So I'll link to a supported device list down in the description below. From what I understand, they use ARKit and ARCore if the device can handle it, but they also extended their old Smart Terrain feature to work with even more devices. So if you're on Android, you're lucky because everything will probably just work here. But if you're on iOS, your success rate is gonna be highly contingent on having the magical combination of Xcode, iOS, and Unity installed. As of February 10th, 2018, this will not work on iOS 11.3. So I had to downgrade to 11.2. I'm also using Xcode 9.2 and Unity 2017.3.1. Anyway, Vuforia does have a very nice sample scene set up already. Uh, if you go to the asset store and you search ground plane detection, you can simply import that package and they already have a scene with all the build settings, everything set up properly. You should be able to build it out to your phone and have everything just work. But today we're going to basically do that same implementation or a similar one uh, from scratch and just place a car on the ground. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, open up Unity and let's start a new project. Okay, let's just call it Vuforia Ground. Okay, so save the main, save the first scene and just call it main. And then go to file build settings and then switch your platform to iOS. Well, iOS or Android, whatever you're working with. And then let's add this scene to the build settings and then let's get the native integration working first. Go down here to XR settings and click Vuforia Augmented Reality, okay? Now, uh, since we're in iOS, we have to add a bundle identifier. So go com dot your company name dot your app name. We're just gonna go Vuforia Ground. And then let's see, in camera usage description, put something in there and then make sure that the um, minimum uh, target build version is at least 9.0. So that should be all we need to do in our settings. So once we complete our app, we should be ready to just build out, no problem. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is add an AR camera. So go game object, Vuforia, AR camera. Now delete the main camera and go back to the AR camera and we're gonna just uh, get, our, get all of our settings squared away here. So click, click open configuration and then go to databases. We're not gonna be loading any of these databases, so we don't need those checked and then go to device tracker, check track device pose on and tracking mode is going to be positional. Okay, so save that. Now, the next thing we need is a Vuforia. We need a, uh, let's see, ground plane finder. Just make that a child of the AR camera. And all of that should be pretty good for right now. And then also go Vuforia ground plane, ground plane stage. That's the last thing that we're actually going to need. So if you were to um, drag this ground plane stage into here and if you were to uh, create a say a cube when you go back to the scene view well let's change the scale to like 0.1 and 0.1 if you were to build this out oh sorry 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 if you were to build this out you'd be able to place this cube uh, on the ground in whatever environment you're in so that's actually all the setup that we need uh, everything would just work from here. But the default behavior of this is sort of strange. It's not like ARKit or ARCore. Uh, how it works currently is when you tap on the screen, you're gonna instantiate a cube everywhere you tap on the screen. So a new cube is gonna be created every time you tap, which might be okay for some use cases, but what we actually want, or what I wanted to do, was uh, when you tap the screen, it just moves that object uh, to wherever you tapped on the screen into the real world. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to go to Google 
and um, type in something like uh, Vuforia ground plane how to and this should bring up like Vuforia's basic tutorial and there's going to be a script in here that we need okay yeah so if we scroll all the way to the bottom almost about the middle there's this script right here this uh, it's called deploy stage once so this will actually handle um, just replacing that object instead of creating a new one every time so copy what's in there and go to create C sharp script and let's call it uh, deploy stage once that's what the class name was I believe so if we click on this this will open up mono develop and we're just gonna paste in that code uh, from the Vuforia tutorial so if we do command or control a delete all this and command control V uh, place everything in there we should be good and make sure your file name is the same as this main class name here and what we want to do is go to plane finder in this content positioning behavior we want to remove this and we want to replace it with that deploy stage once and it's looking for whatever anchor stage you're using so drag your ground plane stage ground plane stage into there now if we were to build this out this will have the same functionality that like ARKit or AR core does out of the box where you click on the screen and it places the object in the world uh, based on you know where your finger was pointing okay now before I forget actually in this script this on interactive hit test this is the function that's performing uh, all the things that we wanted to do but it's not getting called right now um, so if we go to uh, find plane or plane finder behavior uh, in this mode it's set to automatically place objects we want to change that to interactive and now we need to call that that function that was in that deploy stage once script so if we drag this game object into this slot into this unity event here now uh, for the function we can go to that game object and find that function on interactive hit test so now uh, whenever you click the screen that's what they're calling an on interactive hit test now that function from that script will get called so now everything should work uh, pretty well okay so we've got our basic functionality set up and running so now let's go back to Google and let's find this uh, free car 3d model so type in free car uh, I think I found it on turbo squid so if you don't have an account you're gonna have to create one but it's free so click on this link and let's get this first uh, Audi R8 right here and we're going to want the OBJ format so click download and click OBJ right there and there we go that should start our download now let's just rename this R8 so it's a little bit cleaner and let's drag this into our assets folder oh you know what? while we're doing this let's actually go back to Google and let's find our sound for when our car hits the ground before I forget so I think I found it on freesound.org and I typed in car crash sound and I believe okay this one this squish uh, wave this is what we want so if you don't have an account uh, create one it's free and just download this sound right here okay so let's do the same thing with this sound and drag it into our assets folder as well okay so click on our R8 folder and get this OBJ and drag this as a child of your ground plane stage and let's delete that cube we don't need that anymore you might want to play around with this scale but I changed this to 0.036 across the board and that seemed to be uh, pretty close to the size of a real car okay so now when you click on this car you're gonna see that that there's no materials here I have materials here because I already had to do this step because I'm screen recording and it froze my computer but you're not gonna have anything here what you want to do is go from uh, use embedded materials to use external materials legacy and hit apply and then that should get everything uh, mapped correctly for you so that we can now uh, change the color of these materials okay so let's first change the color of the body of this R8 here so I like white so I'm going to click on this or either click on this either click on the body of the car or find uh, the body game object and let's change the albedo to like a white and then let's give it try to find the calipers here so click on those and let's definitely give it red oh crap oh you know what these might be sharing a material oh you know what no break shoe sorry okay even though that's not a break shoe it's a caliper but let's go change this to red okay that looks all right and then in typical r8 fashion we have to change the color of these side blades 
If we're going with a white R8, we're gonna want black side blades. So let's change, oh, you know what? Where is, these are sharing a material with something. So let's uh, right click in the, no, uh, right click in the assets folder, just anywhere, and let's create a material. And let's call this uh, side blades. And then drag this onto the side blades. Okay, now if we click on them, we can change the albedo and it should just change those. So we have to, yeah, let's make that black. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. You could take this further, but I think that looks all right right there. Okay, so now we want our car to like fall out of the sky. So the way that we're gonna do that is uh, we could do it via scripting. We could just uh, lerp, uh, use the lerp function or interpolate, like throw the car up into the air and then interpolate down to the ground, the ground plane stage but that doesn't quite give us the effect that we want because it's too smooth. We want something a little bit rougher. We want to be able to drop the car and actually for it to have physics so the car kind of bounces when it hits the ground. So to do that, we first have to add a box collider to the ground plane stage. So let's disable the car for now and go back to the ground plane stage and let's manipulate this box collider. Uh, change the size to like 0.05, something pretty thin and change its center to negative 0.05 now. 10 on the X and the Z, and that's probably fine. Okay, so that looks good. We got a collider on the ground. Now we need to add a collider to the, to the car. So on its parent game object or its, or its root game object, let's add a box collider. And uh, what are we gonna make this? I don't know. Just size it so that it's that it's pretty big, that it covers the entire car and it starts at the wheels. So that looks pretty good right there. Let's make sure we save this and then in order for this uh, to fall out of the sky, we need to add a rigid body and keep is gravity checked, okay? So now if we hit play, we should be able to see this car fall and hit the ground plane. So go back to the scene view, turn this on and we should be able to now lift, oh, you know what, sorry lift just the car up and let's see if it hits the ground. Okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, so now whenever the car hits the ground, we want it to make a noise. So let's also go to the car and add an audio source and don't check plan awake and then drag in that car crash audio clip to right there. Now we're gonna make a, make a script. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, car controller. And in this script, we're gonna make a function for uh, when the car hits the ground, that sound is gonna play. So let's go to that, click on the car game object and drag that car controller script onto the car and double click it to open in mono develop. Okay, now the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do in here is we're gonna have a public function. So go public void, uh, move car. So every time the user clicks on the screen, to place that car at a new point, we're gonna to wanna to actually th throw the car up in the air so that it falls down into place and then that sound plays. So inside move car, we're gonna do something like transform.local position plus equals a new vector three. And we're just gonna add like 10 to the Y. So every time that button is placed, the car is going to transform its position to like 10 scene units up in the air and then fall down. Uh, but in order to get kind of like that rough landing, we're going to want to do something similar uh, with the Euler angles. So we're going to just rotate the car ever so slightly uh, so that it, it lands kind of uneven and kind of like bounces back into place using the physics. So let's just do something like 5, uh, 20, and 5. Mm, that seems pretty good. Now, we want to play that sound, but we, we only want to play the sound uh, when the car hits the ground. So let's do something like this. Let's go public, uh, you know, sorry, private bool. Private bool sound played, uh, set it equal to false. And then we're actually not gonna need a start function. And then in the update function, uh, let's do something like if sound played is false and uh, transform dot local position dot y is less than 0.05, for example. Then we're going to want sound play, set sound played to true so that this doesn't run again. And then we're going to, um, let's actually start a coroutine. 
called uh, delay play sound. And then down here, let's create a coroutine that just delays for like, I don't know, 0.1 or 0.2 seconds. Uh, delay play sound. Okay, yeah, so we're just gonna delay for like, I don't know, say 0.2 seconds so that like the car has time to kind of like settle because it's gonna hit the ground and like do a little bit of movement before it settles because of the physics. So we wanna delay that sound just a little bit. So yield return new, uh, wait for seconds. Let's delay it by like 0.2. And then we have an audio source on this game object. So we can do something like get component audio source dot play and just play the audio source directly from this component. Now, so in uh, move car function, every time this gets called, we wanna set sound played uh, back to false so that we can play the sound again if we do another like hit test. So this is actually all we should need in here. This function uh, from that script that we just made, we need to make sure that it's gonna get called. So on this plane finder, where it says uh, deploy stage once here, we're actually going to add another function call to this, and we're going to drag in our car game object, and then go to that game object and find car controller, and we wanna call move car every time like an uninteractive hit test is detected. So now let's just test this in the editor real quick and just at least make sure our sound is gonna play. That function isn't gonna get called, but our, oh God, but our uh, sound should play if we raise our car up into the air. So let's do that, activate the ground plane stage, and let's just drop our car. Okay, good. Okay, now let's see if we can get the doors to open up when we get close. Now, um, I wasn't planning on doing this, so I didn't find the best model uh, for this particular use case, but if we click on the doors, you're gonna find that if we try to rotate them, well, there's one, one mesh for both doors, which is sort of a problem. So we're gonna have to open both at the same time. We can't uh, do both by the Y like we would like to, because that's gonna look funny. So what we can kind of do is just give this thing Lambo doors by uh, right clicking here and let's create an empty game object and let's call it uh, door parent. So basically what we're gonna do here is uh, change the, um, kind of like origin of rotation here. So if we click on our door parent, let's move this to where we want the doors to rotate, which I would say is about right there. Now let's grab our door game object as a child and bring it back into position where everything looks okay. Uh, that looks fine for our purposes here. Now if we go to door parent, you'll see that our origin is somewhere over by the side. So now I think if we rotate it on the X, yeah, now we can create, create kind of like a Lambo door function, functionality. So we got aftermarket Lambo doors on our R8 here. So let's actually do something in script form to make these doors open when you get close to them. So we're gonna have to add a collider to these doors to be able to trigger an event. So let's add a box collider and let's make it pretty big. Let's make it pretty large, something like that. That looks okay. Now let's change, I think we wanna change the Z. Yeah, okay. So that looks good there. And let's mark this to as trigger because we're gonna put a rigid body and a collider now on our AR camera. So that is basically what, when you're moving throughout the world in AR, uh, your AR camera, like this is you. So let's go to add component box collider and let's add a pretty big collider to this here. So we don't wanna actually, uh, whenever we collide with the door collider, we don't wanna actually manipulate anything. So we're going to set this to is trigger. So we wanna trigger an event, but not actually have any physics interaction. So that looks okay for that. Now we need to add a rigid body because if you're doing something like um, trying to get an on trigger callback, you need to have one of the, one of the game objects has to have a rigid body. So we'll put a rigid body on here and uncheck use gravity because we don't want it to be affected by gravity. So now we should be able to get events triggered as long as we have a script that's accepting it on our door. So our box collider is on our door. So let's add a script and let's call it, um, I don't know, Lambo door behavior. And we're going to drag that onto our door parent here. Okay, so now we have this script. Let's open this up 
and let's just kind of create this animation in code. Okay, so how we're gonna do this is we're going to use a function called uh, lerp, which is which kind of helps us uh, interpolate from one point to another, or in this case, one angle to another. So first thing we want to do is uh, get a private float, and let's call it current angle. That's gonna be our current angle, which we're gonna to set to zero. And then we're gonna have another private float and call it desired angle. And this is what we're going to be interpolating to. We're gonna set that initially equal to zero as well. So I don't think we need to do anything in the start function, so delete that. But inside update, we're gonna do something like current angle equals mathf dot. Normally you could do lerp if you wanted to just lerp one float to another, but in this case, we're lerping an angle, so we want it to wrap uh, appropriately around 360. So we want to do math, math f lerp angle. Uh, first parameter is our current angle. Second parameter is our desired angle that we want to translate to. And to make this smooth, we're going to use uh, time dot delta time times about, uh, I don't know, th 3f, okay? That'll give us a nice smooth rotation. So we're going to do transform dot local Euler angles equals a new vector three, and we only want to rotate the x. So we're going to go current angle, and then just pass in uh, zero and zero for the y and the z. So that should be all that we need in the update function. So that's going to be constantly uh, interpolating to this desired angle. So now in here, we're going to have two functions. We're going to have uh, one function called void open doors. And inside here, we're going to set. Are you, are you going to be there for a little bit? I'm probably going to leave in like 10 minutes. Okay, sick. Okay, so inside our open doors function, we're just going to set desired angle to, uh, I think 60 degrees was pretty good. And then we're going to have another function called close doors. And inside here, we're just going to set this desired angle uh, back to zero again. Now, the last thing we need is something that'll call these functions. So for that, we're going to do something on something like on trigger enter. This is a Unity callback function that as long as you have um, two game objects, both having uh, box or both having colliders, one of which having a rigid body and the other having the is trigger component set to true, uh, that will allow this function to be called. So we do have all of the above already set up. So we can do something like on trigger enter and we don't want just anything to interact with this game object, but rather we're going to do uh, if collider.game or collider.compare tag. So if the collider that is hitting this trigger uh, has a tag of main camera, we're going to continue here. So what we want to do on trigger enter is we want the doors to open. Okay, and then we can actually copy and paste this because we want to do now on trigger exit. So when we're leaving the proximity of the car, we want the doors to close. So that's actually all that we need to do in here. Now, before we forget, or else this won't work, we want to go to our main camera and change its tag to main camera. Now we can test if this functionality works in the editor pretty easily. Okay, so let's uncheck our ground plane stage, get that on, and now go back to our main camera. So our door's open because we're colliding with the doors currently, so that is good. Turn off the Vuforia behavior script, and now we can actually move the camera up. So when we move out of the way, doors should close, doors are open, closed, good. Everything is functioning properly there. Okay, so now all that's left to do is add our video, which uh, ever since Unity 5.6 is extremely easy. So let's go to our car and let's um, do, 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 do. just create a um, 3D object quad. And this is what our video is going to go on. So let's find our quad and we're going to try to put it, like fit it into the dashboard in our car. Okay, so this looks pretty good there for our purposes. So let's add a component and add a uh, video player. And then you'll see that it can take a video clip. So if you had a video clip in your assets folder, uh, like an MP4 file or something, you could just drag it right up into there and it would work. But we're gonna do a video from a URL. So you can stream in YouTube videos, but there's it's a little bit more complicated than that. YouTube videos are kind of like 
the, the links are abstracted. You can't get a direct link to like an MP4 file or something like that. Uh, so you need to actually go through like the YouTube API and you can pass in a YouTube uh, URL and then get back like the hard link to the actual video. But we're not gonna go through all that today. We're just gonna go through um, getting a video off of Instagram. And we're gonna use my Instagram because I'm, uh, what's the word, self-absorbed like that, I guess. So let's go to my Instagram here and let's, uh, da, 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 da. what should we use? Let's use the video I posted of this video. So if we go uh, right click uh, inspect, oh crap, sorry, right click inspect, we should be able to find this URL down in here somewhere. Okay, very good. We got it right here. So let's, uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's see, copy, where's, okay, copy link address. Oh God, stop. Okay, so copy link address, go back to Unity, paste that in, and you'll see that it, uh, it's appended with .mp4. So that's actually like Instagram will allow you to have the direct link to the video. So that's what we want. Okay, so let's uh, leave all the default settings how it is, but for audio output mode, we wanna change that to audio source. In controlled tracks, we wanna put one. And then we need to add an audio source component to this game object and drag that into the slot. That will get the audio from that streamed in video to actually play. And then let's make this kind of like spatial audio, which is cool, so that the audio from that video only plays when we're very close to it. So what we can do is we'll leave play on awake checked and let's go down here to spatial blend, uh, make that all the way to 3D and then 3D sound settings. Let's go min distance, uh, let's go one and max, dis max distance two. Well, that's still pretty big. Uh, min distance, let's go 0.1. Okay, so this should work. Let's test this in the editor and then this should be the final thing that we have to do. And yeah, that's our video plan right there on the screen. All right, let's build this out and see how it looks. Okay, so to build this out, let's go to File Build Settings. Now, if you're on Android, you should be able to just hit Build and Run and be okay. But for iOS, uh, hit Build and you're gonna have to have Xcode installed. Everything's gonna have to go through there. So let's just, I'm gonna save it on my desktop. Ground, test, iOS, and um, like I said, you're gonna have to download Xcode and if you don't have one already set up, you're gonna have to download or gonna have to sign up for a free uh, Apple developer account in order to get this onto your phone. So let's test it out and see what I screwed up. Okay, so two things that I forgot. Uh, I built out and when my car was, getting, was falling onto the ground, uh, it kept rolling over. So I had to set the size of your box collider, like the width, Set it to something like a little bit bigger than the car. That way it can't kind of roll over. Now the second thing is I forgot to set my video to loop. So go back to your kind of video quad and set the video player to loop so that the video keeps playing. And that should be it. We should be good to try this one more time. Okay, cool. Everything seems to be working. Let's walk to the door, see if it opens up. Cool, doors open, video is playing. I think we're in good shape. So that's it, that's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see in the next video. Goodbye.